Hello everyone. I am thrilled to introduce Rashmi from Texas, USA. She has accomplished a remarkable achievement of cracking five interviews with reputed companies such as Cognizant, IBM, Charles Schwab, Verizon, and Bank of America. Despite the prevalent recession and job losses in USA, so it's a big uh, achievement, uh, Rashmi. So friends, uh, although we could not cover all the questions in one session, so we will be creating a series of interviews with Rashmi. And to avoid missing out of any future questions, please subscribe to our channel. And we really appreciate if you hit that like button and share your thoughts in our comment section. And if you are feeling extra supportive, you can join our paid membership, which is just a way to show us some love and gain access to exclusive content that is specifically designed for our members. And uh, now, my friends, uh, I just heard there are so many agile gurus and coaches in USA who charge thousands of dollars for their trainings. And uh, however, after referring to our career stock video, people from their batches have confirmed that career stock free content is far superior than their paid one. So, but then at the end, it's okay. It's all about people who are uh, reaping the benefits uh, from career stock and securing their jobs. So that's good. That's perfectly okay. People are just complaining me that why you are not uh, doing that uh, those kind of sessions. So that's okay. And yes, without further ado, let's welcome Rashmi. I'm grateful that uh, she has joined us uh, despite it's been, I think, now 2 a.m. Yes, friends, 2 a.m., not p.m. on a Saturday <laughs> in the USA. So thank you, Rashmi ji. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. So over to you, Rashmi. Yeah. Before we start, so, your, you. your, your, your background a little bit in a brief. Yes, absolutely. First of all, thank you so much, Sunand. Uh, I think you're one of the most energetic and most amazing coach, uh, come Scrum Master, come Agile Coach, come everything that Agile teaches. And you, as per introducing career stock to the entire Scrum Masters group, to the entire world who is following Agile is something incredible. So extremely thankful to you for doing this and creating this uh, YouTube channel. I have learned so much from this, especially my entire journey as a Scrum Master. I dedicated to you and Career Stock for the reason that I feel that Sunand has coached me even personally and he's helped me uh, grow into my role uh, and I have reached at this position and I dedicate that entire uh, entire success to Sunan. So I'm extremely grateful to you and to Career Stock for everything that you've done to, for me. So thank you so much. You know, I think it's your hard work, dedication. Uh, you are very constant. You are just chasing me for a lot of things so that's also I normally <laughs> prefer that uh, people uh, yeah I mean I, I mean I also see like whether this guy is actually interested or not and then only I choose my mentees as well so yeah so thanks to you also Rashmi and uh, yeah if you allow shall we start yes people absolutely so... for your all those questions so yeah Yes. So I'll, I'll start with my introduction a little bit here. So I started my bachelor's in 2008 and completed my computer engineering. I worked as a junior software admin initially, and uh, I got an opportunity to work as an acting scrum master when the organization was just um, getting into the agile uh, framework from the waterfall mode and everyone in the team was having that uh, uh, fear that okay we are changing and whenever there is a change there is some fear that comes with it so they saw something in me that they thought that okay I may be able to meet the expectations a little bit out there and they gave me that opportunity to act as an acting scrum master and that really helped me uh, gain a lot of confidence out there because uh, Communication is something that I love from my heart and I feel that it's one very important aspect of being a scrum master. When I came back to US, uh, I mean, I came to US, the initial uh, part, I started applying for roles for specifically as a scrum master. And then Sunan really helped me to gain a lot of knowledge. Uh, he helped me to um, understand which books I need to go through 
apart from the scrum guide there are so many other books that he recommends and we need to follow through that if we have religious and till now i keep following those books it's not that i have read it once and kept it aside so i think he's always told me and other scrum masters or even on career stock that you keep reading those books and you keep following through and that will help you gain a lot of knowledge gain a lot of confidence and help the team become a high performing team too so right now i got opportunity and i have gained my uh, uh, graph and grown my graph and right now i'm working in one of the companies and it was an amazing uh, process yes you do feel a lot of rejections also sometimes uh, in interviews but right now i have uh, a lot of confidence because i was able to clear a lot of interviews in one go so that gave me a lot of confidence so thank you thank you everything uh, you have done sunan hey thanks uh, a lot rashmi okay that's great okay so shall we start now rashmi yes absolutely okay so friends uh, these questions are asked in various interviews uh, shared by rashmi uh, before this session okay so the very first one is what is the optimal number of teams that a scrum master can effectively handle according to you so um this is a very variable question when it comes to a particular scrum master for me i feel that for my uh, comfort level as a number if i have to choose it is two to three teams as per uh, me to make sure that i am giving complete commitment and dedication to each team so that they become a high performing team so for me uh, when it comes to um understanding that how many scrum teams if we say that okay we are just going to take whatever number of teams the company or the organization is going to assign it to us and we say yes to each and every uh, team and we go forward and become a scrum master for that particular teams suppose it is five teams or six teams and there i have seen so many scrum masters in the past having eight to nine teams uh, sometimes but what happens is when you have so many teams imagine that the uh, dominoes that st start falling you are just working for the organization and not providing the complete output dedication and commitment towards the team correct so for me i feel that having two to three teams giving them maximum benefit making sure that i'm dedicating going on one on one meetings so i start with one team when i go into a new organization i go on one on ones with all the team members i try to make sure that i have that comfort level that trust that reliability from my end towards the team giving them all that effort that i think i should be putting into the team to get them to a certain level and then i will let the organization know that i have a bandwidth for the second team or the third team so that's how i try to progress uh, until now the max number of teams that i have gone in my past organization has been 3 and the third also came in my bucket only because it was a very urgency for the organization to give me that particular team because they wanted to uh, wanted some extreme help for that particular team so i think two is the best for me as per my uh, suggestion but three can be the maximum that a scrum master should go for okay thanks for that rashmi great okay so uh, the next question is as a scrum master uh, what steps would you take if the business is uh, unresponsive to a team request so it's a tricky question Uh, yes so this is uh, something very tricky and there are times when the business is very busy and the stakeholders are completely occupied and swamped with whatever uh, work and expectations that they are supposed to bring up for that or their organization so when it comes to our end and we are trying to ask certain questions and certain requirements are missing or something is missing from the team this happened in the past with one of my organizations and i me and my product owner we got into a one on one call that the team is facing this uh, impediment they are facing this blocker and they are not able to move forward with this particular story uh, in our backlog uh, in our sprint backlog so we asked them uh, the product owner and me uh, try to set up a call with the stakeholders they were not able to come on that call we sent out uh, we set up a eta for us that okay until this particular date if they are uh, unresponsive they are not able to get back to us then we will move it to the backlog we will wait for them to come back even if it is something that is high urgency for them it's in their bucket right now that they are not responding to us so we have to be firm as a scrum master in this situation that yes this is the eta we need to have this answer by this otherwise the team is not going to be able to deliver it is going to be in a spillover so we have to make sure that this is uh, this is implemented 
so we sent out an email to them a couple of times they were not able to respond and then we had to put it into the backlog I agree okay thank you for that okay so if you allow shall we go to the next one yes absolutely okay so according to you which principle of the agile manifesto holds the most important for you oh uh, so this is a very tricky question very tough and uh, it can it can raise a lot of questions and uh, it can create a little bit of havoc if i answer incorrectly so for me it depends i think if i have to answer it diplomatically or more maturely uh, i think every principle is very important uh, there is a reason why it's said in the first principle that is high priority the reason is that it is high priority when it comes to giving out the deliverables in a uh, certain manner and uh, for me i think simplicity as for me as a scrum master simplicity the 10th agile manifesto is something that is very important for me i think when when everything is simplified it gives max value uh, for example if um, the product owner simplifies the backlog refine during the backlog refinement if the backlog is uh, simplified it is going to give an excellent uh, clarity for the developers for the team to go ahead and develop that particular story for that particular product for that particular sprint the sprint goal will be very clear when certain when something that is simplified to a extend that it is completely understandable so for me that is the particular uh, agile manifesto that is very important for me but as per my knowledge there's one thing that i have done in my past organization in my past team is included this 12 manifestos in a retrospective and i just asked each team member to uh, prioritize these manifestos as per their uh, understanding at this particular moment at this particular situation in the past sprint what happened so when they prioritized it everyone had a different answer as per their priority so that gives a big clarity for us that okay what the team thinks about this uh, agile manifestos what they feel is particularly important to give value to uh, our uh, sprint goal and how we will be able to deliver maximize the delivery with the uh, value added uh, product so i think that was a very good um, retro that happened and the team was absolutely happy doing it it was something fun that just came out and it was not something that i'm just introducing the agile manifestos in a boring way they understood it they got it explained and then they prioritized it as per them so um, i think depends on the situation what is i think everyone will have a different answer but for me simplicity is something that i really love great rashmi and in fact uh, i use this uh, principle a lot in my interviews that simplicity mm-hmm. is the art of maximizing the work not done so basic the basically the central idea is behind this principle is eliminating the waste so yes. as you mentioned mm-hmm. also right so this is a pretty difficult question as you mentioned tricky question to answer and specifically this specific principle still lot of people don't understand this particular principle in depth so mm-hmm. they will be yeah i mean in experience scrum master will be a little bit difficult for them to answer this question okay uh, thank you rashmi uh, let's move thank on you. so again uh, the next question is not in a way is a question but i think it's a normal thing which happened with lot of scrum masters and mm-hmm. uh, the question is if your team is uh, <clears throat> hesitant to turn on their camera so how you will increase them to feel more comfortable uh, doing so you know so that's the question how you will make sure that your team should open uh, their webcams during uh, these kind of sessions so uh, this may sound very funny but i have uh, always made sure that from my very first day i switch on my camera be it anybody else is switching on or not and when i go on one on ones with every team member in especially on a one on one i make sure that every team member is comfortable with me first i try to make sure that they are gaining trust with me they are seeing that i am here to be a good listener for them whenever they have any issues whenever they have any personal uh, things going on in their life i try to get 
a little bit on a personal level try to know their background try to know them so they get very comfortable with me on the and i think on the very second or third day or the probably the end of the week the team is very comfortable and i suggest that this work method for me works really the best and when that happens the team starts switching on their cameras very easily and apart from that if the team members are not very comfortable switching on their cameras there are certain team members who are very adamant i give them a little bit of time i give them their time to be a little bit uh, comfortable come to a space that they feel is going to be safe the first thing i try to explain every them everyone is what if we were supposed to go to office today and if we are going to office today they are going to see us in person completely everybody is going to be uh, in a very uh, in, in an environment where everybody is visible to each other so think that you are in an office environment and switch on your cameras blur you put a background you put on the uh, screen that you want to and just make it into a nice interactive way and it's especially when you are talking you switch it on if you don't want if someone else is talking you can put it off so that really helped and i think until now it's worked really well and the team members have been comfortable yeah yeah true ashmi in fact uh, <clears throat> i have seen many scrum masters are not opening their own webcams so exactly. basically the idea is that uh, coaching or mentoring start with with me with self. with i first with self first so yeah you start doing it first uh, show some uh, as as you mentioned ashmi Uh, some advantage of opening that that webcam, and then of course the team will follow. Uh, one or two team members are always there. Talk to them. What is their issues? And I think eventually it will uh, fade out. Okay, great. So in my in my last organization, there was one situation that the product owner told me that this was the first time in eight months when I joined the uh, organization. She said it was the first time in eight months that the entire team has switched on the cameras. so uh, i think having a smile for the scrum master having that energy having that enthusiasm from your end gives a lot of uh, motivation for the team also to feel enthusiastic if i am sleepy and i am like not able to give like completely uh, happiness to the team and show like a smiley face or at least be enthusiastic ha- yes we have to be strict we have to be firm we have to be very dedicated to everything but yes always have a smile the team feels very happy with that Okay, uh, let's move on. So, how do you handle a difficult team member who tends to dominate team meetings with excessive talking, or they interrupt in between? So, there will be always one or two uh, these kind of uh, people in all the teams. So, Ashmi. Yes, it's a, a very difficult situation like that, and the scrum master needs to be um, empathetic plus firm in this situation. it's not very easy that i can just give a backlash to that particular team member in one on one and say that okay please give that much space so this situation did happen with me recently uh and when i joined a new team and the team member was speaking the rest of the team was off show and uh, only one team member was on site here in us and uh, the team member was very adamant on speaking continuously in the entire 30 minutes call uh so it was very difficult for the other team members to come on board and share their stand up and uh, ask questions and have a collaboration time so there is a reason why we time box and that reason was explained uh, to that team member when i went on a one on one call with that team member and i told him that we really need to make sure that you are giving your update but you're not speaking for anybody else and you'd give a chance to everyone give let them speak if you think that they are not giving their best you go and talk to them let explain them that okay you are facing these challenges from their end and you try to solve your issues with those team members and let me know if you need any help i am always there to help you and try to solve those issues but give a chance to everyone to speak and that will really help the team to have a better decorum have a better working agreement so when you set those working agreements that really helps the team members to understand that okay everyone else also needs to speak and we we have that time boxing so i cannot move beyond 15 minutes for one for uh, for the entire team for the stand up so i we dedicate i usually dedicate the 15 first 15 minutes for the stand up and the next for the collaboration time and that really helps the team members to get um into asking questions answering questions for each other whatever impediments they are facing great okay thank you rashmi for that 
okay this uh, next question is again most asked question if you are giving 10 interviews i will ensure that at least nine times this question will be asked and the question is uh, what were some of the challenges which you encounter as a scrum master in your most recent teams so that's a little bit tweak over here you may expect some follow-up questions also on this question uh, the way mm -hmm. you will answer so over to you Rashmi. Thank you, Suman. So um, in the very recent team, I faced the most difficult challenge was that the product owner and the team were not on the same page. So the product owner was trying to uh, give the team back to back releases and the team was facing uh, extreme burnout. They were asked to work over their capacity and the team was not able to have a free communication with the product owner they were feeling the pressure from the team so this situation made a lot of things uh, difficult for the team to understand why we are facing this why the scope creep was going uh, was happening why the product owner was not being able to say no to the uh, stakeholders and ask them to wait for that release and we will put it into the next release cycle and when we uh, understood, when me and the team sat together and we understood the problem and the impediment that was the entire team is facing and they were asked to work on the weekends, um, I took a very firm decision and I told uh, the product owner, we are not going to go ahead with this release. Even if the stakeholders are saying that this is high priority and urgency, they have to wait because the high priority that was given before is what we are set right now for our sprint. We cannot have scope creep. We have to make sure that this is going to be included in the next sprint. And then they have to wait. We can have that deadline for the team. And the team will not be working on any weekends over their capacity. The capacity is set. And that's the reason we follow with the velocity. So that's how we are going to be setting the team. So let's not go ahead and do that. And the product owner understood the situation. Uh, Yes, I did empathize with the product owner also because uh, he was facing a lot of backlash from the stakeholders and from the higher management and his boss. So we went ahead and I went ahead and spoke to the stakeholders also that the team is having very difficult time and it was not planned at all. And that really helped the stakeholders to understand and then we pushed it to the next release. So oh, thank you, Rashmi. And for all the viewers, at least prepare three to four different challenges for any given interview. You can use those challenges in various ways in your interviews. Uh, all those scenarios, you should be ready at least with three to four or in, in fact, five different challenges or issues which you have faced as a scrum master in the past. So that's a great question, which is must in uh, all the interviews. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, yeah, so this question is again to check the maturity of a scrum master, I would say. Uh, how much mature the scrum master is, how much experience that is scrum master is. And the question is, what are the characteristics of a mature and effective scrum team? So this question was asked to me in every interview that I gave until now. And uh, it's something that the entire organization looks for because everyone aims to have a high performing team at the end of the day from the day we are starting as a scrum master for the team. So for me, uh, I think it divides into three aspects uh, for a good scrum team. First is the product owner part, then the scrum master part, and then the team. When everything is combined together into a high successful team, that makes a perfectly good scrum team. Obviously, there is there are going to be spaces and room for improvement always in our in, in the long run but when it comes to a good scrum team it starts first with the product owner so the product owner has to be extremely facilitating when it comes to the backlog refinements having very clear acceptance criteria writing the stories in a very clear manner explaining those stories in every backlog refinement sessions to the uh, team and the scrum master and making sure that the questions that the team has is answered this happens when the product owner is always available for the uh, team in any given matter 
I have seen in my past organizations when the product owners are not available for the team, it becomes very difficult for the team members to get connected with the product owner because the product owner is always busy with the management calls or with the stakeholders or with the higher uh, uh, leaders, leadership calls. So when the team, the product owner is always uh, there into every backlog refinement calls, if the product owner is not attending the daily standups, that is absolutely okay. But backlog refinement sessions are very important for the uh, product owner to be there and make sure that the questions are answered. Apart from that, um, having sometimes the stakeholders, including the stakeholders in certain sessions and uh, giving them the authority to talk to the development team also or to the team really helps the uh, product owner to help um, give a lot of clarity to the team members. So that is one part. And when the product owner is successful, that makes the team very confident that they can do it. Apart from that, the scrum master facilitating each and every ceremony, making sure that the impediments are, uh, it, the scrum master is helping the uh, team to remove the impediments, give them a way, uh, show them that the scrum master is always available for them to solve any issues. Apart from that, trying to see that they, the impediments or the blockers the team is going to face, analyzing them way ahead of time and trying to solve them before time. So that also helps a lot for the team to understand that, okay, the Scrum Master is uh, being very proactive in certain situations and collaborating with the stakeholders, collaborating with the product uh, owner, making sure the outside in, uh, interference is not there within the team. There is no pressure for the team. The, uh, scrum master is always standing for the uh, team members <clears throat> and helping the team in every possible way. Uh, this is one thing that helps the scrum master also sharing the metrics with the organization, with the management and taking the feedback, asking feedback for by myself all the time really helps. So I usually keep asking feedback on a monthly basis uh, for myself where I can see uh, a room for improvement. So agile coaches do a health assessment for the team, usually agile health assessments. But for me, I think doing a uh, team level assessment also helps the team to become a high performing team and the scrum master's goal should be that the team is becoming a self-management team self-managed team becoming cross-functional and making sure that one day comes that the team doesn't require a scrum master that is what the goal should be of a scrum master apart from that the development team makes a big um uh, um part of the team and the main important part of the team and when the development team is cross-functional making sure asking all the questions to each other being very uh, independent of uh, anybody else to solve their own impediments to solve their blockers uh, having peer reviews making sure that their codes are reviewed by their peers and uh, making sure that defects are less trying to be very very proactive and trying to be value added value oriented towards the product and making sure that this yes this is my goal this is what i am assigned and i want to give complete dedication i think that day that entire goal is to be that the entire team will come together as a very good scrum team thanks rasmi for that uh, elaborate answer great okay so the next one is also a little tricky. If there are no ready stories for your first sprint planning meeting with your new team, so what you would do as a Scrum Master? So this happened to me uh, once. Um, the team was completely into waterfall. There was an agile coach uh, who was assigned to the team uh, as an acting scrum master. And the agile coach was just into the process of getting the team coached and trying to understand. And then I was hired. And when I went into the in very next day, there was a sprint planning meeting. And uh, I saw that there are no uh, product, uh, uh, there are no stories into the backlog that are sized, that are estimated. The stories are not written completely. They are not meeting the definition of ready. And still they are ready. They are already put into the sprint backlog. I went ahead and spoke to the product owner and asked them uh, in the same meeting that can we see how we can go about right now. I think this is not the right time to have the sprint planning meeting. Let's schedule it after four hours. Um, let's get on a call. Um, 
you me and try to see how we can go ahead and size these stories uh, uh, write these stories in respect of the definition of ready have the acceptance criteria set make sure that the stories are understood by the team members have a small backlog refinement session if it is needed and then have the sprint planning meeting the next day if the team doesn't have bandwidth for today let's move the sprint planning date from uh, the next day and then we can start the sprint on the next day and then have the particular two week sprint because if the sprint is not uh, if the backlog is not refined if there is no backlog refinement sessions that have been happened the team is going to have complete spillovers because they are not going to understand the criteria what they are supposed to work on if the definition of ready is not met uh, if they don't understand suppose there are mock ups that are required everything is going to be delayed so the team needs to make sure that yeah we we have confidence so when i got the vote of confidence from the product owner that yes okay i think i'm confident right now with these stories and we can present it to the team that's when we should have a sprint planning meet thank you uh, rashmi for that page okay so uh, this one is again a little bit the team so how do you help a team member who is very shy and hesitant to speak up during the team meeting um so this happens a lot i think in every particular team there is one or two team members who are a little bit of shy and who are not very open and if they are asked a certain question usually they just say yes or they say no or they don't answer anything in this complete silence and uh, a very funny situation happened with me there was a a, a retrospective time uh, just before the retrospective there was a small uh, survey that the team had to be done uh, it was uh, on a personal level from just from where the person is and we had to update that for our offshore uh, resources and when we i asked the team member that uh, where are you located and i asked the team member the team member said yes oh uh, and i was i again asked where are you located and the team member said yes so i was like uh, okay uh, i think we just need to uh, probably you're not understanding my question i'll i'll come back to you and i'll talk to you later so uh, when it was a funny situation for me because the team, he was understanding the question but he was just saying yes so when i went on a one on one call with him and i asked him why were you just saying yes was i not audible or you were not understanding the question and he said no i don't want to share where i am i staying to everybody else in the team and i completely understood what he was trying to say he was not comfortable and i completely empathized but when certain situations like this happen so i told him you could have just directly said to the entire team that i'm not comfortable right now i'll share it with you in uh, or i'll send it to you on your chat on a personal chat in teams so what happens is there are certain times the team member is not easily opening up so to make that team member comfortable with every other team member i usually try to set up one on one calls with other team members with that particular person who is very shy and just try to open up and i come i also go on that call and i just try to do a normal pep talk a little bit that helps the team uh, the person to open up a, um, other than the work environment when you are having a little bit of connection out here say even in the retrospective simple retrospective if you do that okay uh, i went to this particular school suppose two people are from hyderabad in offshore team and they are they've gone to the same school that connection comes up so that really helps a team member to open up and then slow and steady the team member comes and talks into the uh, team and gives a lot of uh, Uh, asks a lot of questions gives the opportunity to uh, other people also to speak that really helps uh, to get more collaborative so so okay great ashwin okay let's move on so the next one is how do you protect your uh, scrum team from some external interferences and uh, if you can provide some example from the past that will be great absolutely so this happened to me once uh, recently and when i joined the team i saw that everyone from the starting from the rt the agile coach the um, product manager the project manager the program manager everyone was joining the daily stand up and the collaboration and the team was facing a lot of pressure 
in that particular moment that okay when i'm giving my update because everyone is watching what i did yesterday what i'm planning for today and they are not uh, com comfortable with that and then they are coming back and questioning me that why this is happening so when certain situations like this happen uh, what happens is the team gets afraid so this interference for me was very scary i was like this is not what a uh, daily stand up is uh, compiled of usually in as per the scrum guide even if it is a recommendation you should have the product owner which is also optional sometimes the scrum master which is also optional and the team the core team even the core team can facilitate the daily stand up i know many questions will be raised on that but yes the scrum master is someone who can take care of this and the team can take care of this you don't need everyone watching over you at this particular time and make you feel afraid so this outside interference which i saw that was there the first thing i did was i i excluded everyone from the team who was not required uh, in that particular stand up and collaboration time i asked them very humbly that please this is not that the team is not feeling safe and secure right now to talk with each other they are usually silent it's completely in a very uh, monotonous way where only the agile coach is speaking and only the rt is speaking and that's it and even i am not getting a chance to speak i see you not even the product owner coming in and pitching in so i really need all of you all to step away for some time let me see how it works with the team give me one month of time and let me to like two sprints consecutive let me give you a feedback afterwards and then you can decide whether you want to rejoin or not and that really helped the organizational the management leadership to step away and the team started opening up i was hardly speaking i used to ask them the questions and that's it and the team used to usually uh, try to be very collaborative open up ask a lot of questions give their updates very freely and that that gives a very strong sense of freedom for the team to speak in that particular time thank you thanks ashwin most welcome okay so next one is uh, <clears throat> it's again a kind of situational question that if you join a new team and notice that the various issues uh, were there while implementing the agile uh, way of working so what steps uh, would you take to address uh, those issues those situations um yes yeah, so initially i think when we say that the team is into a norming storming forming form like when the other the entire place where the team is first we need to judge whether team in which situation the team is right now and if the team is facing a lot of issues to implement agile or scrum into their um, into their working culture um i try to make sure that i'm coaching the team uh having some certain coaching sessions which are included as a part of the sprint giving them an exact idea what we are aiming for what the organization is aiming for what the organization is moving towards and we need to move hand in hand with the organization so that all of us succeed together when that entire uh, aspect is understood by the team it takes a little bit of time yes you have to dedicate completely make them go through certain coaching session explain them what we are trying to do estim how we estimate stories how we are going to go ahead with the ceremonies how we are going to have backlog refinement sessions uh, how we need to speak to the product owner how the product owner needs to take requirements from the uh, stakeholders and have those stories written into uh, into the backlog so that the team has a very clear understanding and it is easy for the team to size those stories understand the risks the complexities understand the situations and dependencies that the team is going to face anticipate those way earlier and these situations when the team understands that i that has given the team my uh, previous teams a very good confidence on what exactly we are trying to aim for with respect to agile and scrum having small deliverables having continuous releases having making sure that we are moving towards the product goal during in small increments in our sprint goals as with our sprint goals so making sure that we are meeting our sprint goals having minimum spillovers making sure we are taking in only as much as our, as our capacity or little less than that if we need we can add in later but we don't need to have spillovers or having scope creeps uh, making sure we are avoiding these situations so that really helps a lot when giving coaching sessions i think that really helps the team to feel confident great <clears throat> thanks for that uh, rashmi okay so uh, next one is how do you evaluate your own progress as a scrum master in a new team 
or in any organization where you joined recently so how you track your own progress oh i think this is uh, very important uh, for a scrum master when the scrum master is joining any new organization or has been in an organization organization since past 4 years 5 years 3 years whichever number i think as a scrum master with the current scenario or even in the past the way the technology changes where the product is changing where the uh, team is working what the team is working towards i think that understanding and that growth that the scrum master needs to make for themselves uh, judging ourselves inspecting our work uh, trying to have like a scale of 1 to 10 for ourselves um, and asking feedback continuous feedback from our management or from our leadership from the team uh, is very important for me so initially when i go ahead and join any team the first two weeks are very important for me because i usually those first two weeks we are into an observation mode you're trying to see what the team culture is what the working culture of the team is are they mature enough for in their entire uh, in their way of working are they understand what is their understanding of scrum what is their understanding of safe or agile uh, what are the working agreements of other team members how the other scrum masters are working with their team in the organization trying to improve ourselves and getting that first making those small initial changes taking that first two week feedback from our product owner from uh, say the development lead or qe lead and the team will give me a sense of achievement that okay these are the changes that i need to make ongoing for the team to improve and become a high performing team after two months or one month after two or three sprints when i take a feedback again for myself that okay these changes were made did that help the team into a retrospective when we go into a retrospective is not only for the team what they did good or what they did bad we need to ask for us also what we did good what we did bad and how we can improve in the next coming sprint so that really helps that feedback even from the team and even from the management that what difference we are making on in an organizational level great rashmi i think that's a great approach okay yeah that's it i think we are good we have uh... covered all the questions for this session so thanks rashmi for delivering such an informative and engaging session and on behalf of everyone watching thank you for this great learning experience and we look forward to have more sessions from you in future with this thought friends uh, please do subscribe and hit that like button and looking forward for uh, uh, joining in the next session so rashmi Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sunan, for this opportunity. And uh, everyone watching Career Talk has always benefited and will keep benefiting. And thank you so much for all the dedication and time that you give to uh, this YouTube channel. Just because of people like you, I mean, uh, who is more dedicated? You and me. Like you are like two o'clock over there. I think now two two thirty over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was also just woke up in the morning, uh, five six o'clock. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's basically both way right rashmi so thank you yeah. for thank for you. for you okay i think it's good we can close this session now thanks